Yes. Okay, the record is on. So uh, I didn't get to finish this uh, example of the uh, virtual work to calculate the deflection of the truss in the class, but you should know that uh, it's not that uh, difficult and it's straightforward. Some of you have gone ahead and tried to do something in the uh, active session classes already. Um, the bottom line is you need to analyze the trust. Okay, that, uh, there's no getting away from that. And before we begin, let me erase this first. So you need to analyze the trust twice, two times, okay? You need to analyze um, the trust two times. First is the actual load condition. The actual load will give the actual displacement or deformation of each member, okay? And the second, the virtual load. Let me say again, apply at the location that you want to know the deflection of the thrust and in the direction that you want to know. The most important thing is to analyze the thrust twice separately, okay? You have the actual load, purely actual load, Uh, hang on, um, uh, I'll, I'll answer your question later because I don't understand it. I don't know, okay, L 2.06, whatever. Okay, A, B. Yeah, it's gonna be, I don't know. It, you think it's a wrong, the length? Mm, it's square root 17 over two, I don't, um, yeah. Is it wrong? I don't know. Okay, let, let, let's, let's come back here. You need to analyze the structure twice separately. First is under the actual load. That case will give you the actual displacement or uh, deformation of each member. The second is the pure virtual load. Okay, you don't mix the load up. You don't apply the virtual load onto the actual load case. You apply the virtual load on an empty truss. All right? So this is the analysis of um, the, the uh, truss under the actual load. Okay, these are the results of the actual load. And remember, because this is work, so be mindful of the, the type of force you get, the, the, the force being tension or compression will affect the work that your structure does, okay? So this is the, the analysis. Uh, I have done the, the work and you see that member AB is a zero force member. And you guys should try to recall the zero force member as well because when you know that this is a zero force member, it means that the actual displacement of this member is zero. So it would not produce work at all. And B, C here is a compression equal to 41 minus uh, two, something like that. Okay, this is a symmetric structure, all right? Uh, so, hey. Um, no, it can't be right. Hang on a minute. So, so this, uh, information is wrong. I can't believe it because this one has a CD. It has to be 41.3. So I think I probably messed up the, uh, the, the names. This uh, CD, it has to be because it's symmetric, right? 41.3. And then, uh, yeah, the names are wrong. Hang on. So I, I think it's better to, to fix it here. Mm, one moment. 
Um, this is this is FG, and this is GH. Right, because FG and GH, you get uh, tension equal to forty. That's correct. So tension that's 40, 40. And then the, this is uh, perhaps, it's gotta be red, right? And then this is zero force, remember this is BE. And then this is uh, CD. Okay, my apologies for that. All right, so that, that would do. Okay, so you do this and then you would know that uh, this would lead you to the, the displacement. But if you do it, uh, if you want to calculate the deflection or deformation of member AB, it's now the force multiplied by the length divided by AE, okay? So now you move on and then you uh, apply the virtual load. Here, because we want to calculate the mid-span deflection, right? So we apply the unit load at mid-span. Deflection is, of course, the downward uh, movement of your structure. So you apply the unit load in the downward direction like this. And then when you have the load, you again perform the analysis to get the virtual response. Okay, so this is the virtual response. This one is due to this. And then this one is due to this case. Okay. So now you would know that for the same member AB, um, you got the uh, zero force member. Okay, here, and then a top chord is a compression, right? Always, because it's a simple beam. So that one is minus uh, 0.687, it's compression. And because it's symmetric, you have half load down. So this one better be tension equal to one. And that is also one and one and so on and so forth. You know, it's two third. Tension um, and so on. You know, I, I, I'm not going to write in everything. So now you see when you calculate the internal work that each member does, it means that let's say member AB uh, has a zero of forces in both cases, right? So I'm not going to do that. So let's let's look at member BC. So for member BC, for example, member BC, the actual displacement is going to be minus 41.23, uh, right? And its length is, that okay, too big? Length is 2.06 divided by AE. So that's the uh, deformation of the member BC itself multiplied by the virtual response when you apply the unit load. So that becomes this one, 0.687. Remember, it has to be the corresponding values, which means that this is the uh, actual deformation of member A, B. This is due to actual load. Oops, not A, B, right? Uh, B, C. Due to actual load. And then this is virtual response of 
member BC as well under the virtual loan. So it has to be of member BC in both cases. So when you need to use both values for of member BC, that's we can say corresponding, you know. Use the corresponding values. So when, when it's, it, it comes in this kind of form, we can actually create the table. Because in the end, it's, it's uh, you know, you're multiplying everything. How come I have so many uh, blank space? So this is the member BC that we, uh, we've done momentarily. We ha I have the length, I have the actual response, okay, which uh, will lead to the calculation of the actual deformation. And then I have the virtual response. So I can multiply everything together. Let's say I call this F for the actual. This is for the virtual. So in the end, the, the internal work for member BC becomes the F of BC, L of BC over AE and then multiply by N, okay? So basically you multiply everything together and this is the result. So that is the internal work done by member BC and you do it for every member, okay? And in the end, it's a summation of this that will give you the total internal work of member uh, of the trust, the entire trust. And that is the summation. And because AE is a constant, so I, I move them out, okay? So in the end, this is the sigma F N L divided by A E or E A, whatever, it's the same thing, right? But that's a number. So if I have the value for A E, I can substitute now to get the final uh, deformation of the trust. Okay. And I could, uh, oh. F G, oh, okay. Okay, um, hang on. No two meters. Um, you can you can go back and check the geometry of the truss. I think it's pretty straightforward. Okay, um, so let me let me finish this first. And this is the case of the you know the internal work when we want to try to calculate the horizontal displacement of um the truss, the horizontal, the horizontal displacement at the roller. So in that case, I apply, sorry, I apply the horizontal load at the roller, okay? And then I also analyze the truss. So, you know, basically this becomes like a, a straight member because none of these members can have the force at all, right? You just only have tension here, there, and everywhere on this because of the, the, the coincidence of, of the force, all right? So that's pretty straightforward. So this becomes the, uh, the corresponding values, you know, in this column. And then in the end, you, you do the same, okay? So the, the, the only difference is that um, the virtual, uh, the internal virtual response will be different. All right. So is there any question? No, it's okay. Okay. Is there any question, folks? So that in a nutshell is the calculation of displacement in the uh, task by using the virtual work. I also have another example. It's more of the same, you know. Um, let's say this is the, the calculation mid-span deflection and horizontal movement of joint L5. So this, this guy is a bit more difficult uh, and I have given you all the numbers. So you could easily go back and try to, to practice, okay? Um, let's say this is not symmetric. So yeah, it means hard work. And if you face a situation like this uh, and let's say we don't use a computer program, um, 
it just that 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 there's no two ways about it. What is n to one? What is n to one? Don't be afraid to speak up. Why why n to one? Which one? Which one are you referring to? N two is like the second case, okay? Because I have n from two cases. The first case is when I apply the uh, the virtual load here. That's my 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 number one case. And then this becomes my number two case when I apply the unit load at uh, horizontal direction at the roller. Because the first case, first case, I want to know the mid span deflection of the truss. So I apply the unit load at mid span in the vertical direction. The second case, I want to know the horizontal displacement of the roller. So I apply the, the, the unit load at the roller in the horizontal direction. And that's what it is. So to to distinguish the calculation for both cases. So I, I name N, N1 and N2. Okay, okay, good. Uh, I, I appreciate you, are, you are asking the question, but if possible, do speak up, okay? It, it's quicker for me to respond and, and you know, to, to send a message to, to the chat. It's like a one-way communication. Sometimes it's kind of difficult to, to, to understand what you want to know more, okay? But, but, but thank you. All right, okay, so that's clear. So let, let's come back here a little bit and let me try to wrap it up. No, yesterday was kind of cool and uh, the, the weather was very, very comfortable. So I'm wearing like two shirts today. I thought it was gonna be cold again, but no, it's getting hotter and hotter. And I'm beginning to sweat like a, you know, sweat bag, <laughs> call, it, call it. So yeah, it is the same. And, and it would be a nice practice of you to try to go back and analyze this trust. I'm, just, I'm not gonna go through all of them, but let's point out that this is the actual uh, load, okay? This is the, the internal forces due to the actual load. Okay, and this is due to the uh, uh, when the unit load is applied. If it's a mid span de de uh, deflection, it's going to be this one. Okay, and then the third one because we want to know the horizontal movement of joint L five, so we apply the unit load here. So that becomes the this one. Okay. So it's, it's more of the same, you know, uh, the new knowledge is not much because you know that you, you multiply everything together for, for each member. But the thing is the analysis of the trust. So if you ask me, I think that uh, this problem is straightforward and easy because it, it say, say, it relies on the old knowledge. But that's a problem as well because the, we don't say it's all knowledge because it's all because but just because you forget it. But you know, as I have uh, said before, I don't agree with you know repeating what you have learned before. If you have learned it, if you have understand it, if you have understood it, um, you should go back and review your materials. I'm not going to be the one who reviews it for you. Otherwise, we would not go anywhere in the future if we have to keep going back to statics like every time. Okay, so I think in a nutshell, that is the calculation of the virtual work uh, to, to, to obtain the deflection of the trust. Is there any question? Is there any question? And you guys should know that, you know, open book or closed book wouldn't matter, you know, because you would know you would have to analyze the trust. The trust. And uh, keep in mind that I would give you the fact of three always. I must finish every problem that I give you within uh, one hour. So I wouldn't give you a crazy trust like this in the exam, because even, uh, even though I, I, I am quite quick, it would take me quite some time to finish the analysis of this trust as well. And it would not be a good measurement to try to, to kill you with stuff like this. 
Okay. So if you know how to analyze the trust and, and you know, if you are efficient enough to do it within the, the proper limited time, you should be fine. And believe me, every year for those who try to do it, they got the forces wrong. It's kind of sad. It's, this is statics, right? After all. Okay, so that's it. Um, if there is any question, let me uh, go back here and say again that for the virtual work in beams and frames now, we are dealing with the, the, the moment, okay? And we need to write the moment equation. First, for the virtual load case, which uh, you know, comes in terms of the small m. The second is the actual load case, which comes in the terms of big m. And here, they must share the same domain. So there is nothing else to do but to try to go through the examples right away. And yeah, because you guys have had it with our new head of the department as well, right? So we're gonna come back here and we'll try to use the virtual work to solve for the deflection of these uh, beams. Now, remember we did uh, use the moment area method the last time. You know, I am confident enough to do this uh, by myself. So let's say you now know that this is the actual load case, right? And this is W. And to calculate, uh, say, delta max here, we now need to apply the unit load where we want to know the deflection and in the direction that we want to know as well. So this beam, our virtual load is going to be applied here. And, you know, because of the way you guys deal with virtual work, I remember somebody asked me about the writing the one star and so on and so forth. Yep, you want to, if you love the star so much, you can write it. I don't mind. Okay, I wouldn't mind. And it will take it points off from anyone. So it's it just for you to know that, okay, this is my star virtual work. Stuff like that. If you want to use the dash, it's fine as well, whatever. Okay. But now you know you need to write the big M equation for the actual uh, load case and the small M equation for the virtual load case. But keep in mind, folks, that you need to have the same domain for your function. So Let's say in the, you know that to write the moment for the virtual load case, it'd be pretty easy if you begin your origin from here and then, you know, move your X from, from the tip of the beam. So if you, you decide to do that, you must do the same for the actual case. Okay. And I hope that, you know, because you need to write an equation, now you must be pretty good with the free body diagram stuff. So I think we have enough time. So we, in, in order to do that, we need to cut the free body diagram anywhere, right? And then write moment equation, we begin from X. So the big M is going to be WX, am I correct? That's the total load. To make it a moment, we must multiply by x over two. So it becomes wx squared over two, right? That's the actual moment of this particular beam under the actual load. And the x begins from the tip of the beam from right to left. And now for the virtual, just one, right? And be mindful of the direction of the moment as well. This is all uh, in the uh, clockwise direction. And for this, it becomes as one multiplied by X, right? And now uh, these two moment equations, this one, the first one is also valid from zero to L. The second one is also the same. And they, all, they, they also share the same origin. So that means you now are free to multiply the two equations together to form an integral. Okay. So in comes an integral. 
of course, we need to collect all the work. So the integral must be from zero to L. And now the big M, W X square over two. The small M is just X. And the EI is constant. So I'm gonna pull EI out of this uh, integral, then DX. Okay, so you see, uh, even though it is the, uh, yes, okay. Even though this is integration, but we are not doing anything dramatic at all. We are not uh, dealing with the logarithm function or trigonometry function. It's just typical, you know, uh, power function. So you should be able to handle this fine. And if not, your calculator can also handle this. So let's uh, get over this, shall we? So this will become one over EI, W is constant, and over two, okay? And X cubed becomes X to the power of four over four. This is from zero to L. So you see, it comes out pretty easily. W L to the power of four over eight E I exactly what we got from last time, right? Did we have the same number from last time? Long time ago. It would be embarrassing if it's if not, <laughs> if they're not the same. Okay, because you guys aren't responding, I have to go back myself. No, this is not it. Oh, it's gone. Yeah, see that? WL to the power of four over eight EI. Pretty far back. So is there any question? Is there any question? Uh, yes. There is a question. No, yes, question or no question. Anyway, um, there's no nothing more on the chat, and uh, no one is talking to me. So let let, let us go to the, the example of this uh, beam. This uh, simple beam it becomes slightly more complicated because now you know if you want the maximum deflection of this beam, you need to apply the virtual load. Oops, sorry, will kill you, right? If I, if I swap the support, can I do that? <laughs> ah, you know, would it change the result? Yeah, it's can do. Okay, let's not kill you. I need to apply this. Yeah. And you know, um, you should be able to see right away that, um, okay, okay. We, we, your moment diagram here, you're gonna look something like this, right? In the virtual case, this becomes your bending moment diagram. So now you cannot use one equation because if you write one equation for them all, you know that you cannot have one equation to represent two lines, right? So in this case, it becomes tricky because your moment diagram is not one constant function. Just you, you can see clearly from the diagram itself. So that means two integrals are required. You need to break this into uh, two domains, right? This, uh, the case on the left, it's just one domain, so it's pretty easy and straightforward. For the case on the right, look at the bending moment diagram of the beam under the virtual load. Now you can see that uh, there are two domains for that, and that means you need two equations. And uh, your range here, that's L over two, okay? 
So let us uh, write the moment equation for um, this. So for the actual case, now we all know that the reaction here is WL over two, correct? If that's W. So the M for the actual load case, you cut the free body diagram at any X direction, right? I mean location, at any X location, right? And uh, now we write the moment equation. For those of you who are not quick enough to see the free body diagram, it doesn't hurt to write it like this, okay? So that's WL over two, that becomes your X, no ex-boyfriend or ex-girlfriend, just your ex, like X, okay? And you have W. When you take the moment here, your moment will become WL over two, which is the reaction. If you are confused, just put the parentheses there and then multiply by X. Minus, again, it's just like a cantilever, right? WX squared over two. This equation is valid from zero to L over two. In fact, this moment equation is valid throughout the span for the actual case, but you know, you have to make uh, the two domains uh, similar. Otherwise you cannot multiply the function. So let me try to be consistent and write the, the, do the same domain here, okay? So now for the virtual load case, it becomes, the reaction here is a half, right? It becomes a half multiplied by X, and then that's it, okay? And the range or the domain is of course from zero to L over two. And you guys should notice now that if I am going to write another domain and, and its equations, uh, I begin. I can begin from this. Okay. Uh, let me see. Uh, let me see. Okay. X from sport. I can do the same, and you would see that you know the equations would come out to be the same. So I can say that uh, if I am going to write the integral for the first domain, it's going to be one over e i because e i is again constant, zero to l over two. Okay. The first equation, the actual one is WL over two X minus WX squared over two multiply by X over two DX. This is the integral for just half of the beam. You need other than half, but then you realize that your beam is symmetric. So the another integral term from right to left, because you don't want to write from, you don't want to do this. Do you? Start another X from mid span. This is a mess. So you would want to do it from this as well to make it like a mirror image. And when you do so, it means that the integral is going to be the same, right? So we can, we might as well multiply this by two. Okay. I can still do this integration by hand, but I have to be careful. So let's say it's, um, let's multiply one by one, okay? The first term will become WL x squared over four. The second term becomes minus W x cube over four as well. So I can perform integ uh, integration of this. And then because four, they're the same. So I'm, I'm taking it out of the integral and you face two out front. So that means it's one over two EI. And then after the integration, this becomes W L X cube over three. 
minus w x to the power of four over four from uh, zero to l over two. Okay, and then wow, that's too much. I'm getting lazy now. Let's just see if I have the value somewhere around here. So that is turns out to be yeah. In the end, I don't have it, but it, yeah, it's gonna be five. W L to the power of four over three eighty four E I. So that that's the, uh, the 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 basic example of the the virtual work for the calculation of the deflection of the beam. Okay, is it too quick? Am I going too fast? It's fine. It's fine? Yep, fine. I mean, it's fine. Okay, for, it's fine for Nakarin. What about, what about others? Is it okay? Yes, uh... Okay, please don't hesitate if you want to ask me something, okay? Um, the, the worst question is the questions that you don't ask, okay? And uh, don't be afraid of your broken grammar. Most of you guys have broken grammar. It's not going to kill anyone. It's not going to kill you. If you don't practice, it's not going to get better, is it? Right? So don't be afraid of that. I never mind that at all. Okay. So that's another example down the drain. So if you don't have any question, I am obliged to move on to more of the same examples. Okay. So, okay. Can you do this, guy? Uh-huh. Can you do this? Now we, uh, you know, it just, it just to show the power of the, uh, the method. Even if you have the, say, the section property that is not constant, you can break the integral, right? And because you have so many load cases as well, you need to break the integral. One thing that you could uh, say do is that if you can visualize the bending moment diagram of your uh, structure, it would help you to see how many equations you need as well. Okay, so this one is a, is a rough choice because um, there are so many ways to, to write the equation to this case. You could uh, keep the same x or you could change the x depending on what you want to do with, um, with the calculation as well. Okay. And let me see. I actually, I have uh, pretty much everything covered. So, okay. First, it's to determine the deflection at C and then the rotation at C. When you want to know this, you would apply the download uh, force, right? But when you want to know the reaction, what causes the ro rotation, ladies and gentlemen? Moment. Good, it's moment. So if you want to know rotation, you must apply moment. Okay? So that you would have a choice, you know, in solving the indeterminate structure and stuff. Sometimes you could remove the, uh, the, the fixed support. Let's say for a case like I have shown you before, if you, oh, it slips. If you have the indeterminate structure like this, you could either do this, Or you could either do this. You, you can remove the roller or you can remove the fixed support and, and turn it into a hinge. And in this case, uh, what used to be your solid support, it is now going to rotate. 
right? And this would used to be your solid uh, support will now deform. All right. So let, let's come back to our business. I can't figure out what I've done. But, you know, uh, knowing myself, I kind of prefer to, to keep the, the same X for the virtual load. So let us try to write the moment equation with X always begin from here. Okay. All right, so now let's go. My big M, I suppose I should write uh, the uh, range. Now, mm, I generally don't begin here, so let's move it elsewhere. Um, you know what? Okay, I need a name. We, I, we have the name. So let's call this uh, member A, B, and C. So instead of having this, I need to move this somewhere as well. And I better write this as a portion. Okay, that would be better. The portion uh, B, C first. Now the moment, this is gonna be, uh, let's say you may wanna use positive or negative, it doesn't matter, but you have to be consistent, okay? So this is gonna be minus 10 X. Me. And the uh, range that this moment equation would be applicable would be from zero to five. Okay. And now we move on to piece uh, AB. Now it's getting tricky because if I want to keep the X there, what would be my uh, equation? But remember, we, we are now writing moment on the portion AB. And if my X begins from there, my moment equation will still be minus 10 X minus W, which is 2.5. But now my x is going to be x point uh, minus five square over two, right? Really, I need to move this. Okay, and now my range will be zero to ten. So, you know, when, after you write an equation, you can always check the validity of your equation by substituting the values back into it and see how it performs. So if I have this, I can try to, you know, substitute five into this and see what happens. When X is equal to five, the term of the uniform load is completely gone, right? And you only left with this term, which, you know, if you cut the free body diagram of member BC, that's exactly the moment that you should have, right? Because that's uh, 50. So when you plug in x equal to five, the second term is gone. The first term becomes minus 50, which is this moment. So my equation works. If you don't plug in the numbers back to the equation, it means you either lazy, you know that it would work, 
or you don't know that it doesn't work and you don't want to know that it doesn't work. Okay? So what kind of person you are? All right, so that's that. Any question about this? Is there any question about this? Now you, you can see that you need to be able to write the moment equation properly. And that of course comes from the fact that you are able to write the free body diagram properly as well. Then the question folks. Come on. Hello. Guys, folks. Crystal clear. Crystal clear. All right. So if you guys are crystal clear, why don't we take a crystal break? 10 minutes. Okay. Um, let me uh, stop the recording.